uh, how do you uh, bring back all that uh, momentum for yourself? One of the biggest things is I think you know take just a little bit uh, regroup. But two, a lot of it is a not a lot of it, but part of it is you know the flubs. He's had two socks where he's kind of overextended or you know kind of messed up his recovery and like things like that are so important in the grand scheme of things. Um, where minimizing those like major mistakes makes it so the minor ones don't hurt as much. All ah, right. We are starting off on uh, Neil Julesville. Uh, I believe we start off this game, uh, first game in the first set, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes, correct. We did start here. Um, and it's interesting because Sego did win here. Um, and so Zaro has to think that he's able to win here uh, by not banning it, or just doesn't want him to be able Because I know that Crystal Oasis uh, slash Forest Floor is a stage that Zaro was just banning in the counterpicking stage. So it's always going to be a starter that he's going to ban. And so it's like, does he not want Sego to go to tower? Because I don't remember what his second ban was. All right. So Jules will just be, might be the stage that he's the most comfortable on that he's realistically able to go to. But Sego off to the nice start, like we saw in game number one of that first set. And that's a great parry on the crystal field. Yeah, with that, and uh, two stocks apiece here on this first game of the reset. Oh, Zaro, uh, Zaro sorry, uh, Sego going off from stage twice. Yeah, did not get the spike hit of that fair. Ended up getting the uh, the outer hit like Rana would get. Um, maybe not as strong where it's going to kill as early, but still a very, very good move. And that oh, up is going to do it. Wow, I, I'm surprised he converted like all with that. Yeah, there's the bubbles. Yeah, I like that from Sega. He uh, jumped outside of the bubbles there to avoid it instead of just like uh, stand up parry because uh, that would allow Zaro to just like sneak up from underneath the platform and uh, come in with a sneak attack. Yeah, big parry. You know, the down smash might not have been the best option uh, for a parry punish, but uh, who am I to tell Zaro what to do? <laughs> Maybe his brother. Yeah. <laughs> now, Zaro and I, we have done, uh, you know, I have done a little bit of Heat Wave. Uh, I am Zaro's, you know, coach, but uh, it's not like uh, I'm constantly telling him what to do. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm Are always you? willing to help. But Zaro even it out now, uh, one stock apiece, but that up air was so scary. If he got sent out, we would have probably seen uh, an up special coming out from Sego. All right. Uh, where's he going? That should be it. Oh, oh. only gets the first hit, pops him out. Um, good DI from That's it Zaro, it. but Sego getting wow. game number one of this grand finals reset. So very similar situation to what we saw uh, in the first set. Zara losing game one on Jules Vale. So in my mind, you know, in the future, something that I would tell him is, you know, if you're playing Sego and he's playing Olympia, ban Jules Vale game one for your starters and try out a different stage <laughs> because it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're probably going to see uh, Aether, uh, Ethereal Gates. But, oh, Fire oh. Capital, which another, you know, big stage gives Zara a lot of room because um, uh, Zara's kill percentage isn't too, too, uh, it isn't too hindered by this, where down smash is still going to kill, up smash is still going to kill, and bear is still going to kill. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, with the uh, S-Zaro, you did mention before, uh, for Fire Capital, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you yep. did say Fire Capital uh, gives Zaro a lot more breathing room. Yep. And uh, also he can, uh, he has more stage to move around and reset neutral if he has to, uh, given that if he retreats back to stage. Yeah, and being able to charge that up smash was so good for Sego there on the extended parry stun. Um, and Sego off to a really good lead here. This is not what you want to see if you're Zaro on your counter pick. But yeah, the space here for Zaro is really good because it's gonna you can force Sego to try to approach you a lot more in these instances. And because of uh, Olympia speed, it's a lot of, a lot of it can be telegraphed with things like I'm putting the crystal down, I'm gonna side me into it, and then try to fly towards you. And then mix up is what well, Ariel I'm gonna do with that up smash. He's gonna do it. Um, similar to how Sega got that first stock, Fairy Punish Up Smash. Kind of the name of the game for these characters at those uh, lower 100%. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we saw uh, Zaro making so much tech chases from, like, from ground into the top. And it was, uh, like, unfortunately, it was uh, that didn't allow Sega to get any movement out of those because he, he was stuck in them for a long while. Yeah. Uh, that's, it, it, that's really scary against Arcane because... It's either you can uh, SDI out or you know, SDI the proper way or just get stuck in the tech chase and straight up die. Yeah, and Zaro breaking the crystal there was very good. Sego kind of got caught up on that platform with the, with the side special. Um, and now Zaro's done an excellent job of bringing the set back. And I think Sego took Zaro's for stock. He's at maybe 40%, but uh, oh now Zaro with the percent lead. And 
looking for this down smash. Down smash will be close to Galaxy. If not, it will Galaxy. I think 157 it will. Uh, that oh. was an interesting option. Yeah, that was almost the perfect DI that Psycho could do. He went all the way across the stage. Could have gone a little bit closer to the corner, but like I said, it was close to Galaxy. Um, um, and Zaro now building up that extra credit. Sego at 40%. Oh my god. <laughs> he just smash. let it rip like yeah. that? We had like an extended uh, hit stun because the down tilt connected to the crystal. Um, I think it has hit stun. I could be wrong. It could have just been a straight up hurt box extension. I think it's actually just hurt box extension now that I saw it one more time. Um, but the hurt box actually couldn't get hit by that F smash. Yeah. All right. Very doable here for Sego again. Um, but then uh, Zaro has. Great carry on that back here. Uh, oh, whoa! So Very clutch uh, roll away to get uh, to avoid that teleport. Yeah, and Sego's built on the damage, both of them now. Uh, basically, even for that, that won't kill. No, that's not. Yeah, that's the, the counter pick coming into play. Uh, those big blast zones, and very good on Zaro to get oh, oh away because Sego does have the option to turn around in that focus attack. Oh, that's it! And that's it, Sego going up 2-0. Oh my god, dude, his screams. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, as we said, very, very animated player. Uh, you Z <laughs> Zaro, on the other hand, not super duper animated until he really wins a set. And it's oh, a, a it really? Set. Like, you know, I will say, if we see Zaro, you know, pull off this reverse 3 we'll see a little bit of a pop off for sure. But, you know. Did Sega flip off the camera? Is that I, don't I, I don't know. I don't know. But Zaro, uh, you know, down 0-2, as we've seen, um, like I said, waiting for Sego to ban stages. But in my mind, where we're going to probably see Zaro go, I want to see Gates, because Gates is the stage that he won on in that first set. I think picking Fire Capital wasn't too bad. It was a very, very close set. Right. Or not set, but game. And Sego opting to ban Merchant, but I I'm looking for, like, Gates here. Uh, like I said, I love it Gates. Winning it in the first set should give you that confidence to pick it here. Um, I think it was a pretty solid game, but <clears throat> Tower of Heaven, not too bad of a choice as well. Yeah, I, I, I personally like this stage for both uh, characters. I mentioned it a ton over my like, other sets, but uh, with these upper triplats here, getting a conversions off of the top and getting to that top ceiling, which, uh, oddly enough, sometimes uh, if you get sent to the top and if you don't DI in the correct way, you'll get uh, pulled up yeah. into the blast on ceiling. And what a stock there uh, starting off this uh, starting off this game from Zaro uh, with the up strong. And already starting again the tech chases now. Yeah, Zaro, this is the game three that you need. You definitely want to make like a statement like, I'm still here, Sego. Uh, <laughs> don't forget about me. And <laughs> he is definitely doing that right now where, oh my gosh. The, okay. Okay. And yeah, we see him staying. And that's oh. a great side B. Um, Sego might want to push that crystal out a little bit further, but. Zaro uh, on a tear this game. Two stocks in the first 40 seconds. Or, sorry, 50 seconds. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, uh, you know, looking very undoable for Sega, I'll say. But, you know, this is Rivals. Uh, anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. All it takes is a couple double fares. Oh, oh, I like the idea there, Sego. Yeah. That, I love that, though. He got all the conversions, but unfortunately spaced out uh, the very last bit of it. Just a little a little too out. Yeah, you have to take some of those risky options like that up there um, to try to steal and get a early stock so that your comeback is even more doable. But then it's also about not overextending too, too much. Uh, like if Sego would have up there, for example, uh -huh. um, he probably would have ended up dying. I felt it, though. I honestly would feel like he would do that. <laughs> But yeah, now ah, Zaro, very, very good game three. That's the game that you need, like I said, when you're down 0-2. Having that confidence that, yes, you know, I can still two-stock this person. Um, so now the bands would be interesting. We should see, like, Crystal Oasis, uh, Tempest, and, yeah. <laughs> I we, we, we have not yet seen Gates the second set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a place that Sego will uh, end up counterpicking to. Um, Rockwall, you know. Good stage for him to go to, and Sego does have the counter pick advantage. If he does end up losing this game on Rockwall, has that game five. Yeah, very. I mean, I personally would like to see a game five because I, you know, more rivals. Yeah. But I mean, this will be huge for Sego to win on Rockwall. But right now, it's not looking off in a good star because uh, Zaro 
having these tech chains locked down, especially he's uh, doing a good job trapping Sego on these platforms too, which has been uh, building up the speed all the time. And now Ooh. he's caught in situations like this where Sego had no more resources left. Yeah, he's seen that Sego a lot of the time and trying to land kind of with an aerial out of the bubbles and sharking it with the up air there. Such a good option for Zaro to be doing because um, up air does kill super early. We're going to see a crystal pop here maybe. Oh, yeah, just a little bit late. Um, but Sego, you know, has Zaro at 83%. Zaro now finally building up that extra credit percent on the second stock. And that's what you need. When you get that first stuff, you want to try to snowball that lead as much as you can. And these bears are a good oh one to start. God. Unfortunately, Fastel just passed the ledge on that second one. Had he gotten be, been able to land on stage, probably could have gotten two two more bears uh, with the resource refresh. How, how many bears uh, as Orkane do you think you can connect, like on a string? Like on a string, if you never land, I think you can do like three for sure. Um, especially if they're hard DI'ing in. Have you ever seen four? Uh, four, if like they reset their stuff, they can. Uh, it just depends, because that's kind of what we would have seen there. And oh, Sego going for that upbeat. Would not have killed in my mind. And I don't think it would. And that'll kill. Up yeah. smash. Still a great kill option, especially on, you know, rock wall, where not the hugest ceiling. Um, Sego dying to it at 117%. So uh, it's definitely a move that Zara has to think of. And great coverage there with the dare. And Sego doing what he needs to do to try to bring this game four back. Yeah, and he's really got to be careful with these uh, side blast zones here. Uh, oh, oh, up here? I was expecting up B, but yeah. we get an up strong, and Sega one stock away from taking cost 2022, but Zaro one game away from uh, tying it up 2-2, two to two and we go to a game 5. Yeah, Zaro on a tournament stock. We saw a full DI, there, DI out there on the bear. Super, super important. And Zaro, oh, no puddle, gets parried. Oh, this is crazy from Sego! This is going to be no hard. No puddle! Yeah, I think that's can. it! Sego takes cost 2022! Look at that pop-off! Well deserved! The chair is gone! Sego off the stage with an amazing jump. Very well deserved. Yeah. Unfortunately oh my god! For, unfortunately for Zaro there, um, ended up Orca hopping a little bit early. Wasn't able to get up above the ledge. And so because of that, when he does that upbeat, or uh, his jump off of the wall, he just can't get up back to the ledge. So good stuff wow. for Sego. Uh, that was a huge parry, you know, to kind of force him off the stage.